Addendum to Revelation chapter 8, Wormwood. So, Revelation chapter 8, verse 10. And the third messenger, the third angel, sounded, and a great star fell from the heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the fountains of water, and the name of the star is called Wormwood. And a third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the waters because they were made bitter. And we went through this bitterness, these bitter waters, and how we see this word wormwood in the Old Testament uh, in the Revelation chapter 8 video, talking about Deuteronomy 29 and Proverbs 5 and Amos 5 and Amos 6 and Jeremiah 9 and 23, talking about where you see this bitterness, these bitter waters. It always has to do with idolatry and false worship in the Old Testament. And then as Yah does, he always reveals things in his perfect time. I was reading earlier today in Numbers chapter 5 in the Nasov Torah portion. And in Numbers chapter 5, there's this very interesting ritual. Speaking, or starting in verse 11. And it's a ritual performed by the high priest with a man and his wife. If the wife is, if the man is jealous of his wife where he suspects adultery but can't prove it. And I'll remind you as we read this that our Yah, our Creator, our God, is a jealous God. He is jealous over His people. And that we are the bride of Christ, the bride of Mashiach. Okay? So, I want you to listen to this ritual in Numbers chapter 5 in context of bitter waters and wormwood. Numbers chapter 5, verse 11. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that's us, and say to them, When any man's wife turns aside and has committed a trespass against him, any man's wife, we are the bride of Christ. When any man's wife turns aside and has committed a trespass against him, and a man has had intercourse with her, and it is hidden from the eyes of her husband. So whoring around on Yah is idolatry. Okay? And a man has intercourse with her. She's whored around and has hidden it from the eyes of her husband, the bridegroom. And it is concealed that she has defiled herself. And there was no witness against her, nor was she caught. And a spirit of jealousy comes upon him, and he becomes jealous of his wife who has defiled herself. Or a spirit of jealousy comes upon him and he becomes jealous of his wife, although she has not defiled herself. So this ritual is a proof as to whether or not she has defiled herself. Then the man shall bring his wife to the priest, and he shall bring the offering for her one-tenth of an ephah of barley flour. He is not to pour oil on it, because the oil represents anointing and setting, setting things aside unto Yah. So no oil in this offering because we don't know if there's been sin here. Or put frankincense on it, because frankincense was part of the incense, a crucial part of the incense that was used to burn unto Yah. And those, that incense represents the prayers of the saints going up to the Father. Well, we know from Proverbs and elsewhere in the Word that Yah does not hear the prayer of those who are willfully sinning. Okay, so no oil, no frankincense. Because it is a grain offering of jealousy, an offering for remembering, for bringing crookedness to remembering. And the priest shall bring her near and shall make her stand before Yahuwah. And the priest shall take set-apart water in an earthen vessel, holy water, set-apart water, and take some of the dust that is on the floor of the dwelling place and put it into the water. And the priest shall make the woman stand before Yahuwah and shall uncover the woman's head. Now in the oral tradition, she's completely disrobed, bare breasts and everything. And shall uncover the woman's head and put the offering for remembering in her hands, which is a grain offering of jealousy, 
while the priest holds in his hand the bitter water that brings a curse. And the priest shall make her swear and say to the woman, If no man has lain with you, and you have not turned aside to uncleanness under your husband's authority, be free from this bitter, bitter water that brings a curse. But if you have turned aside under your husband's authority, and if you have defiled yourself, and some man other than your husband has lain with you, the authority of the husband, who's the bridegroom in this relationship with us in our belief? It's Yeshua. Then the priest shall make the woman, and the woman always represents the church in Scripture. Then the priest shall make the woman swear with the oath of the curse, and he shall say to the woman, Yahuwah make you a curse and an oath among your people, when Yahuwah makes your thigh waste away and your belly swell. And this water that causes the curse shall go into your inward parts and make your belly swell and your thigh waste away. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen, let it be so. And the priest shall write these curses in a book and shall wipe them off into the bitter water. Now, we'll just pause there momentarily. Write these curses in a book, a book, or a scroll. And if you look at Revelation 8, and when he opened the seventh seal on this scroll, there came to be silence in the heaven for about an hour. Write these curses in a book. The priest, who's the high priest per Hebrews? It's Yeshua. Who's opening these seals on the scroll? It's the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. It's Yeshua. So the priest shall write these curses in a book and shall wipe them off into the bitter water. They would write it on a little scroll and put it in the water, and the ink, which hadn't set yet, would seep into the water. And shall make the woman drink the bitter water that brings the curse. This is approving of the woman, the church, if you will, in Revelation 8. And the water that brings the curse shall enter her and become bitter. And the priest shall take the grain offering of jealousy from the woman's hand and shall wave the offering before Yahuwah and bring it to the slaughter place. And the priest shall take a hand filled with the offering as it is a remembrance offering and burn it on the slaughter place and afterward make the woman drink the water. And we look at Revelation verse 3. And another messenger, another angel, came and stood at the slaughter place holding a golden censer and much incense was incense was given to him that he should offer it with the prayers of all the set-apart ones upon the golden slaughter place which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayer of the set-apart ones went up before Elohim from the hand of the messenger. And the messenger took the censer and filled it with fire from the slaughter place and threw it to the earth. And there were noises and thunders and lightnings and an earthquake. Very similar imagery here. So back to Numbers 5, 26. And the priest shall take a hand filled with the offering as its remembrance offering and burn it on the slaughter place and afterward make the woman drink the water. And when he has made her drink the water, then it shall be if she has defiled herself and has committed a trespass against her husband, the bridegroom, that the water that brings the curse shall enter her and become bitter and her belly shall swell and her thigh shall waste away and the woman shall become a curse amongst her people. But if the woman has not defiled herself and is clean, then she shall be clear and shall conceive children. This is the Torah of jealousy, when a wife turns aside under her husband's authority and defiles herself. Remember, we are the bridegroom. I'm sorry, we are the bride. Yeshua is the bridegroom. This is the Torah of jealousy when a wife turns aside under her husband's authority and defiles herself, or when a spirit of jealousy comes upon a man, and our Yah is a jealous Yah, and he becomes jealous of his wife, that's us, then he shall make the woman stand before Yahuwah, and the priest shall do to her all this Torah, and the man shall be clear from crookedness, but the woman shall bear her crookedness. If there's crookedness, she shall bear her sin. So knowing this, Revelation chapter 8, and when he opened the seventh seal, there came to be silence in the heaven for about an hour. And then down to verse 10, and the third messenger sounded, and a great star fell from the heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the fountains of water. And, on the, and the name of the star is called Wormwood, bitterness. And a third of the waters became Wormwood, bitterness. And many men died from the waters, bitterness, because they were made bitter. 
I believe, based upon this reading, that this third trumpet that sounded, this third shofar that sounded of the seven trumpets that have sounded, this is Yah testing, proving his bride if his bride has been unfaithful and many men will succumb to the bitterness because they have been and the woman here is the church has always been the church allegorically in scripture and based upon all the research that I've done on this numbers in uh, this passage in numbers chapter 5 there's not a biblical recording of this process having taken place if somebody did this in the temple, it's not recorded historically in the Bible. But I think that's what we're seeing play out in Revelation chapter 8 with the third trumpet, verses 10 and 11, the bitter waters. This is the Yah proving his bridegroom. As, we, as we've seen elsewhere in the Old Testament, why are there waters of bitterness? Because of false worship, because of idolatry, which is whoring around on Yah. I just thought that was a really powerful thing that I wanted to share with you all as an addendum to Revelation chapter 8 because it lines up perfectly. It is a ritual for proving the faithfulness of the woman, the bride of Christ, to the man. And many men. And many men died from the waters because they were made bitter. This goes back to Yeshua in Matthew chapter 7 and many men died because of the bitter water Matthew 7 verse 21 not everyone this is Yeshua the bridegroom speaking not everyone who says to me master master shall enter into the kingdom of the heavens but he who is doing the desire of my father in the heavens Many shall say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? Then I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. Many shall say to me in that day, and I shall declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. And many men died from the waters because they were made bitter. I just felt that I had to share that with you. Bless y'all. Shalom.